If you clicked on this video, you're probably struggling in one of these key three areas in school. When you take notes, do you struggle to put concepts in your own words that you understand and resort to just copying what the teacher says word for word? Or maybe you're struggling with understanding the concepts you're learning. You want to understand them, but you just feel overwhelmed with upcoming exams and deadlines, so you end up using temporary and short-term studying techniques. And because of this, when the next semester comes, you don't remember anything from the last. And lastly, are you tired of having to study for long hours, leaving no time for socializing with friends? It's okay. For the past few months, I've been working with Ivy League student Aiden Helfont to come up with a better way of note-taking and learning. So in this video, I'll be showcasing Obsidian University, an Obsidian Vault and course to help make school both fun and enjoyable, which you can learn more about in the description. It's a ready-to-use workspace for school and learning with templates, systems, and applied lessons to overcome the problems I've just mentioned. Instead of feeling lost with your lectures and notes, you can set up an organized system to take effective notes from all the different books, articles, and videos throughout the class. To properly understand new topics, what if I told you that you could create an everlasting web of ideas that could build on top of previous semesters, providing an interconnected foundation for learning new things. Then, in these notes, you could personalize them with your own experiences and thoughts to further solidify your understanding. Finally, you can make studying fun for once by easily turning the notes you made earlier into useful flashcards, letting you follow optimal studying practices like active recall and spaced repetition. Anyways, let's take a deeper dive into how we can set up our Obsidian Vaults to prepare us for upcoming student transformation. The first step is to set up your Obsidian Vault for all the information and notes you'll be making related to school. So let's take a quick look at this new student workspace. In the Vault, you can easily access different types of notes through the Spaces view. And if we click on My School, we can see a quick dashboard of things like what assignments are due soon, and what courses you're currently taking. But to dive into a specific kind of note, like courses, we can click on My Courses. In here, we can sort and group them using queries, which in this case is just by the ones we're currently taking. But if you want to see a more customizable view of all our courses, we can head to the My Files section at the bottom of the note. Anyways, if we actually look into one of these course notes, we can then break down the course even more into units and concepts. If you want to learn more about how to set this all up in your own vault, you can watch my video on MakeMD and my video on how to set up Obsidian for school. Now that we have a rough structure for our different types of school notes, we're ready to finally start taking notes. Instead of copying what's on the slide word for word, we need to create a personalized structure for the important ideas and concepts we learn about. When we come across a source of information like a lecture or a book, we need to have a place to organize these notes. Luckily, in the vault, we can go to the My Lecture note for lectures and My Inputs notes for general content to see them and keep track of their status. Backlog notes mean I've only taken raw notes of them straight from the lecture. In Progress means I've started turning these basic notes into more conceptual notes and organizing them into the rest of my vault. And lastly, finished notes are, well, finished. And if you're consuming a new input, like a new lecture, you can simply press the button in the note or run the create a new lecture command to create a new lecture note, which then creates a new note based on the note lecture template. In my case, I just have a little summary header at the top to fill out after I finish taking my notes and a notes header to dump everything I find important. So, as a lecture happens, you can begin taking notes. Instead of being on autopilot and copying word for word, be sure to think critically and play with the ideas in your head before writing it down. Aiden recommends to avoid writing things that aren't of use, which stands for unimportant, self-explanatory, and easy enough to memorize on the spot. Whenever you're writing something, make sure you filter it through the acronym to keep your notes dense in value. What's important is that you're incorporating your own unique interpretation and perspective. For example, here's some notes I took from my cognitive science class. 
To organize all this information, some people like to use questions to structure them like flashcards, while some like to keep it in a hierarchical organization, using different levels of headers or bullet points. After the lecture or content we're consuming is finished, we can move on to the next phase, which is turning these inputs into conceptual notes. Instead of keeping these notes in a sequential form based on how our professors or textbooks teach it, we get to choose how these ideas are organized. Now, we can change the status of the lecture note to yellow to mean in progress. And to turn our input notes into conceptual notes, we can go through our notes to pick out any concepts we can create new notes for. Anyways, in the vault, you can run the command to create a new concept note and link it to the unit it's related to, and the note will show up there as well. There is no really strict rule on what a conceptual note should be. To make it easy to link these notes together to other ideas though, it's recommended to remember two things. Conceptual notes should be kept as small as possible within reason. A broad connection from brain to psychology won't be as meaningful as a connection from the default mode network and its related functions like temporal thinking and managing our ego. But at the same time, we don't need to make conceptual notes for everything just for the sake of doing so, especially if that concept is common sense. So once you're done turning all of your lecture notes into conceptual notes, we can head to the unit that we linked all of them to, which in this case is just memory for the class cognitive science. And as you can see, they all automatically show under the concepts header, under unordered. You'll also be able to see these concepts if you go to my concepts. And as you can see, they're all under backlog since all we did was copy paste them from the lecture. We still have yet to expand, connect, and make flashcards with them, which I'll show you how to do later on in the video. If you want to learn more about how to continue this process, you can check out Aiden's video on how he takes conceptual lecture notes. So now that we've distilled our notes into distinct concepts, it's time to organize them in a way that makes sense to us. We can try to understand the process of conceptual note taking as if we were building a spider web. Just like how a spider starts weaving its web from a central point and builds outwards, we can start building our understanding of a topic from established conceptual notes we have made, from information and knowledge we have already acquired from past experiences. As we weave new strands of information together into our web of ideas, we may need to rearrange the strands to make sure they fit together to make a well-rounded web. Sometimes we may need to develop certain areas of our understanding before connecting them together, but eventually we will be able to weave them all together into a strong and cohesive web of knowledge. And as we add new notes, our web begins to evolve and it's with these new phases where we can draw conclusions that we might not have seen before. In reality, when learning about a certain topic like memory, there's lots of similar and related concepts pulled from different subjects and disciplines. As you can see, it wouldn't make sense to contain these ideas only in the courses and subjects we learn them in. The beauty of learning is synthesizing everything together into your own personal understanding of the world. And luckily, we can do this in Obsidian through maps of content. Maps of content are notes that don't contain much information, but are instead used as a guide into the related ideas of a topic. To create a map of content in the vault, we can go to the atlas and click the button to create a new map of content. In the mock template, we get to easily see related mocks and concepts, which we can easily populate by creating links from other notes to this note. For example, the principles of good studying is related to cognitive science, so I can make a link to my cognitive science note, making it show up in the view. And as you can see, my studying mock already has concepts linked to it, like space repetition, since I created the link at the top in those notes. But if you want, you can also manually add the links into the mock to provide more context. And in this case, we can just do so by saying that spaced repetition and active recall are the most beneficial studying practices. Oh, I've messed that up. Beneficial studying practices to improve our memory. And we can also make a link to our memory note. And then we can also continue connecting our concept notes as well. So if we go into the memory note and we can say that things that improve our memory include studying and sleep. And now that I think about it, 
Memory is a huge part of cognitive science, so we can also make a link back to that map of content as well. So then if we refresh this, we can see memory show up in related concepts. Then we can just continue making connections in sleep. We can say that it's related to memory, helps consolidate memory. And if we go back to studying mock, there's still some other practices we forgot to include, like interleave learning. So I'm going to link that to studying as well. And then if we open up the local graph of this studying note, we can see all the notes linked to it. And if we increase the depth, we can see what notes are linked to those notes we just saw. Our web is slowly but surely growing. If you want to learn more about how to create your own maps of content, you can check out how I did so for one of my university courses. But now that we have all this information well organized, it's time to transfer the knowledge from our second brain into our biological brain. You probably heard of the 80-20 rule before, where 80% of the results come from 20% of the causes. And when it comes to studying, that impactful 20% comes from active recall and spaced repetition. If you don't know already, Active recall is when we intentionally retrieve information from our memory instead of just reviewing it passively, like rereading a textbook. Second is spaced repetition. We can strategically review the information after a set time interval. This refreshes our memory and makes it take longer to forget, which lets us slowly increase the interval from days to weeks to even months and years. In Obsidian, we can incorporate spaced repetition using the Obsidian Spaced Repetition plugin. So let's start making some flashcards. Over here, we have all the notes we created earlier from our lecture. So let's just go into the first one, which is memory. With the spaced repetition plugin, if you want a note to have its content turn into flashcards, we first need to tag it with the hashtag flashcards. Once that's done, we can create multi-line flashcards by having the front and back separated by a question mark, just like this. When you create flashcards, it's important to leave spaces between other content because since there's no space here, it's going to think the front is this entire block, which would be quite messy. Since we have this space here, this part won't be part of the flashcard. So let's remove this space and add a space in between here and benefit. And let's do the same for the other parts of the note. I'm just going to quickly add headers to these just to make it look neater and then add the question marks. So now that we've created our flashcards, it's time to use them by opening up command palette and typing up flashcards. We can then choose to review flashcards in this note. We get the front of the card and I think a benefit of memory is, I actually don't know, let's just see the answer. Okay, clearly I didn't really know the back of the card. Um, yeah, down here, there's three buttons which you can click on depending on how well you answered the flashcard. In this case, I'm going to choose hard so I can see it one day later and then we can just keep doing the other flashcards. A downside to memory is show the answer. I didn't know that one either so let's just do hard again. Now if we exit, we can make flashcards for our other notes like interleave learning. There's also different kinds of flashcards you can create other than multi-line. There's single line and to do so you just need to have a front and a back. In this case I'm just going to put the title of the note as a front. And after that, I'm gonna add two semicolons to separate the two. If you also want to create a flashcard where this is the front and this is the back, you can add another colon. Another type of flashcard is the close or fill in the blank. And to create something like that, we just have to select the text that we want to have as the blank and we can add two curly braces to it. Then we can just add another as well. Now we can add the flashcards tag so they'll show up as flashcards. And now we can run the command again and see that Single line works as expected. The reverse single line works as expected. The fill in the blank works as expected. And yeah. Once you get a lot of these cards though, across different subjects and units, it might get too cluttered when reviewing your flashcards. So we can separate them using nested subtags. So if we just add a slash and then change this one to interleaved and go back to the other one and add slash memory to it. If we go back to flashcards again and open up flashcards, we can see the different kinds. But since we already finished all the flashcards and interleaved, it doesn't show here. Congratulations, you're now on your way to becoming a better student. If the practices I've shared seem useful to you, you can check out Obsidian University. You can learn to save yourself hundreds of hours of frustration creating your own Obsidian School Vault and get one set up immediately with templates and example use cases. 
you can learn how to effectively take notes, learn, and study using Obsidian through 8 lesson modules with 120 notes and over 29,000 words. And lastly, you can join a community of other passionate and curious students. Traditional schooling molds you into the perfect factory worker, sucking away at your unique perspective and forcing you to conform to rules and procedures. To stand out, we need to find out how to do more than just memorize and pass exams and, you know, copy pasting what ChatGPT tells us. We need to learn how to use this information in creative and meaningful ways. Hopefully, you can see the shift outside of school as well, just for all the ideas and information you come across in life. With all the mindless content available now, exploring meaningful ideas and having your own individuality has been more important than ever. If you want to learn more about how to use Obsidian for school, you can watch my playlist which contains the videos I mentioned throughout the video. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. This has been John Maverick, stay mindful.